uh, sorry, some of the older um, Clematis uh, species uh, and the, uh, the hybrids from some of those ones are, are really great value for, for money. I, this is Viticella et al. Violet that was raised way back in the 1800s. Uh, so I can't claim that that was all of mine, I think, although I'm getting pretty old. Uh, but the viticellas are great plants for growing over archways or arbors. Um, if you have a, a large bed or, or an area, maybe a bank, that you've got something like some of the flat spreading junipers in them, then you can grow the viticella clematis over the junipers. It gives added color and interest during the summer. You chop them back to about 30 centimeters um, in November-ish and then you can enjoy the junipers during the winter. And you can do the same with the winter flowering heathers, um, where the heathers look uh, fantastic during the winter and the spring, but look pretty boring, with just greens during the summer. So you can use a bit of celecum just to just trail over them. And also, if you have pachysandra, or if you're going to have potentilla, or some of the other ground cover plants, throw the, the viticellas over them. So that one is et al. violet. Other varieties are abundance, which is a pinky, pinky mauve. Alba luxurians is a semi-double, a semi-nodding sort of flower. That's white with green tips to its uh, sepals. Uh, that, that's good fun. Raw velours, a uh, deep purple um, is, is really good. So there's quite a range of these bitter cellars. So just remember the bitter cellars. The only one perhaps not to use on your junipers or heathers um, is one called Polish Spirit, uh, a marvelous plant that I introduced from Poland uh, many years ago, but it's, it's so vigorous and so strong uh, that it'll really swamp your heathers, so that can grow up into a tree. And then I love some of the later flowering species. Um, you have ones like Tangutica Bill Mackenzie with nodding yellow cowbell-like flowers. They're, they're really great value. That will get up to probably seven, eight meters or so in height. And I know at the University Botanic Garden here, I've got a photograph I still use in my lectures where it was going over an arbor and looking fantastic. That will flower from uh, early mid-June onwards, has lots of fluffy <coughs> seed heads, uh, and that will flower right through until the frost. And this one is called uh, Terniflora, or the Sweet Autumn Clematis. And actually, Gary, I see its name Paniculata, which it shouldn't be. Um, uh, Paniculata is, is, a, is, a, is a New Zealand species. So this is Terniflora, uh, the sweet autumn clematis, and that will get up 30 to 7 meters in height. A marvelous tiny white flowers, really strong scent. Uh, so a very useful plant for you know, a more of a woodland type, type setting. So those are the clematis that I wanted to share with you, uh, but I also want to share with you some of my thoughts of some of the clematis you can use with other plant material. This is Actinidia uh, co uh, columicta, um, uh, uh, which is really a very useful vine. This is very often, or we used to grow this on east-facing location, or maybe even north-facing location, where you get the better color of the foliage. That can certainly, you can use that as a host plant for clematis. The rivies. Um, the marvelous at this time of the year, and then not so interesting for the rest of the summer. Uh, they make fantastic host plants where you can let the clematis grow up through. So if you've got a rivies about this size, or maybe a bit bigger, then plant a clematis uh, really of, about uh, well, 50 centimeters or so away, and then trail your clematis up into the rivies. Uh, that is very, very effective. And many of us these days, well, in the milder areas around here, I'm sure you're growing lots of hebes, uh, the green ones or the variegated ones. Some of them are quite low, and certainly you could grow some of our boulevard clematis over these. And you can imagine the deep purple of Fleury mixed with this, or even the pale blue of Cezanne would blend perfectly with, it, with some of the hebes of that color. The sophra, which is a gorgeous uh, foliage, uh, would make uh, as a small tree a large shrub that would make a great host plant for clematis too. And the lilacs, of course. Uh, the lilacs are fantastic. A limited flowering period is fantastic when they're all flowering, but uh, the rest of the summer, not so interesting. So they would make a great host plant to grow some of the viticella clematis that I've just mentioned up through those. 
maybe you have lots of purple foliage plant material in your garden, maybe the berberus or the purple leafed hazels, lots of uh, cottonus. Can you grow cottonus here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so those purple foliage plants would be a great host. You could imagine if you were growing in a slightly shady spot, uh, ones like Chantilly or uh, Cherokee uh, or the pale blue of Angelique would be look absolutely outstanding with that. I mentioned Ceanothus uh, earlier on in my talk. Well, they make an incredible host plant uh, for clematis. And then the rhodos again give us color and pleasure in the spring, uh, but the rhodos are really a great plant, as a great host plant uh, for, for clematis. So I could go on and on with those, but I love growing clematis with gray foliage plant material. Thank you so much. But with gray foliage plant material like the Senecios, if you can grow those, or again some of the gray foliage kiwis, uh, they're really uh, absolutely super host plants. So I could spend the next hour or more sharing with you some of the different planting associations, but uh, I know you all have fantastic imagination. All I want you to do is buy a plant from Gary. <laughs> Thank you for the water.